Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, classmates. I am Angeline Sebog, the leader of Group 8. Our topic, Chapter 9, Grading and Reporting System. In order for us to know the flow of our discussion, these are the following names under assigned tasks. Me, Miss Sebog will discuss the overview and number 1, K-12 grading and of learning outcomes. And Miss Yunson will discuss the number 2, the effect of grading on students and 3.2 major purposes of grading and reporting. Miss Terse will discuss the number 3.3 like, grading and reporting methods and different interpretation of letter grades. Ms. Tabaransa will discuss the number 3, 3.2 percentage grades, and 3.3.4 pass and fail grading. Ms. Visconde will discuss the number 4, developing effective reporting system, and number 5, tools for comprehensive reporting system. Ms. Tomabat will discuss the number 6, the guidelines for better practice and dos and don'ts, of effective grading and number seven planning and implementing parent teacher conference and last is miss beroy will discuss the recommendations for effective parent teacher conference and now let's proceed to the overview the past chapters of this book discuss the different methods and tools that measure students achievements in the context of the different learning targets in this chapter, the assigning of grades to students and how it should be done in relation to the inten intended learning outcomes have been achieved and that grading policies of schools must also be taken into consideration in developing grading system. Our learning objectives, at the end of this lesson, the students will be able to demonstrate skills in preparing and interpreting grades. Number two, students will be able to assess the effectiveness of parent-teacher conference as a venue for reporting learners' performance. And lastly, number three, to demonstrate skills in interpreting test results and grading and reporting grades. And now let's proceed to the assessment of learning. So during and after instruction may be achieved in a number of ways. One of the challenges in grading is that summarizing the variety of collected information from different types of assessment and come up with a standardized numerical grade or descriptive letter rating on brief report. So there are four guidelines premises in developing grading and reporting system. So first guideline is the primary goal of grading and reporting is communication. And number two guidelines, grading and reporting are integral parts of the instructional process. And number three guidelines, good reporting is based on good evidence. And lastly, number four, changes in grading and reporting are best accomplished through the development of a comprehensive reporting system. So those four guidelines premises in developing grading and reporting system. So in developing and implementing the grading and reporting system, these premises must be taken into consideration to have a meaningful output and it help in the attainment of the student's learning objectives to which the assessment objective is cascaded. So again, let's proceed to the number one, the K-12 grading of learning outcomes. So the K-12 curriculum have specific assessment, requirements and design catering to the delivery modes of learning, the formal education and alternative learning system. So this too is the um, part of the K-12 curriculum. So in the K-12 assessment, it is a learner-centered and carefully considered its learning environment system. In 21st century skills, such as research, analytical, and critical, practical, and creative are part of the indicators included in the K-12 assessment. So both of the cognitive and non-cognitive skills, which includes the values, motivation, attitude, behavior, traits, and interpersonal relations are part of the assessment. So again, both the cognitive and non-cognitive skills, which includes um, values, motivation, attitude, behavior, traits, and interpersonal relations are part of the assessment. So let's proceed to the formative assessment or assessment for learning. So when we say formative or the assessment for learning, it is given importance to ensure learning. In addition for that, discovering what students know while they're still in the process of learning. So that is assessment for learning. And assessment as learning, it is a learners are encouraged 
um, to take part in the process of self-assessment. And also, it involves students' reflection on learning, monitoring of his or her own progress. So, next is the summative forms of assessment or the assessment of learning. It is also part of the curriculum assessment under the K-12. Again, it occurs when teachers use evidence of students' learning to make judgment on students' achievement against goals and standards. So that is summative form of assessment or assessment of learning. So the K-12 curriculum prescribes that the assessment process should utilize the wide variety. So there are two, the traditional and authentic assessment of learning. Traditional and authentic assessment complement each other though they are not mutually exclusive. Furthermore, it gives greater importance on assessing understanding and skills development. So in K-12 curriculum assessment will be a standard based to ensure that there are standardization in teaching and learning. So the Department of Education or the DepEd issued in order, um, DepEd order number 31 series 2012, stating that assessment will be done in four levels and will be weighted accordingly. So first level is knowledge. So when we say knowledge, it refers to the essential content of the curriculum, the facts, and information that the students acquire. Number two level is the process. Process, it refers to the cognitive acts that the students does on facts and information to come up with meanings and understanding. Number three level is the understanding. So when we say understanding, it refers to the lasting big ideas, principle, and generalization that are fundamental to the discipline which be assessed using the facts of understanding. And lastly is the product and performances. It is refers to real life application of understanding as shown by the student's performance of authentic tasks. So those are the four levels and will be weighted accordingly. That is according to Department of Education issued an order, Dep and order number 31 series 2012. So the sign weight per level of assessment are shown in the following table. So level of assessment, the knowledge, process of skills, understanding, product and performances, and percentage weight. So the knowledge has the first 15% um, weight and the process of skills has a 25% weight and understanding has a 30% weight and product and performances has a 30% weight, the total of 100%. So at the end of the quarter, the student's performance will be described based on the prescribed level of proficiency, which has equivalent numerical values. So when we say proficiency level, it is computed from the sum of all the performance of students in various levels of assessment. So there are five proficiency levels. First is the beginning, developing, approaching proficiency, proficient, and advanced. So when we say beginning, at this level, struggles with his or her understanding of prerequisite and fundamental knowledge. Number two, the developing, it is possess the minimum knowledge and skills and core understanding. Number three, level of proficiency is approaching proficiency. It has developed the fundamental knowledge and skills and core understanding. Number four is the proficient. It has developed the, the fundamental knowledge and skills and core understanding and can transfer them independently through authentic performances. Last proficiency level is advanced. When we say advanced, it exceeds the core requirements in terms of knowledge, skills, and core understanding. In translating this proficiency level into its numerical value is described in the following table. So the level of proficiency, beginning, developing, approaching proficiency, proficient and advanced, and equivalent numerical value. So in beginning, has 74% and below. In developing, 75 to 79%. Approaching proficiency, 80 to 84%. In proficient, 85 to 89%. And lastly is advanced, the level of proficiency, 90% and above. The source of this is the DepEd Order 31 Series 2012. So the comparison of levels proficiency, the indicators is the acquisition of knowledge, skills, and understanding. In the beginning, struggling or have not required. In developing, minimum. 
While the approaching proficiency is the fundamental, and proficiency is fundamental also, while the advance is the exceeding. So, transfer of knowledge, application of knowledge in indicators. Well, the beginning has no. And uh, developing needs help in approaching proficiency uh, with a little guidan guidance from the teacher of some assistance peers. Well, the proficiency level is independent. And lastly, the advanced is the automatic and flexible. So, the source of this comparison of levels of proficiency is Mar Mar Marilyn D. DeMano's presentation materials on assessment and rating.